Taiko Drumminger's performance art meets martial arts with its heady combination of primal rhythms, precision and the physical strength demanded of the drummers. Taiko has been practiced in Japan for more than 2,000 years and in China, Korea and other Asian nations even before that. New Zealand though has been a bit slow to catch on with groups starting up only in the last 20 years or so. But that doesn't make our Taiko drummers any less enthusiastic or dedicated. Hamilton is about to host the first New Zealand Taiko Festival. I met up with three drummers who will be there, Michelle Miles from Y Taiko and Auckland-based drummers Michael and Saho, who explained Taiko's history. It is said that uh, Taiko most likely travelled from the Asian continent with the migrations of people and then in Japan it developed to be used as a communication tool uh, between far away villages and uh, religious rituals and festivals like to give thanks uh, for good harvest and despite its long history as an instrument taiko as we know it is a post-world war ii phenomenon because taiko became performance music after one japanese jazz drama his name is uh, oguji daihachi put multiple drums of different sizes side by side and played them together in 1950s. So it's not a long time ago, it's uh, about 60 years ago. And there's an enormous amount of lore behind taiko drumming as well. Uh, there's even rumors that in age-old days that the taiko drums were placed in the center of villages and that as far away as you could hear the drum beat, that defined the boundaries of the village. So there was a lot of motivation to play the drums as loudly as possible, get your strongest people on them, and of course make the drums just enormous so that the villages could compete. And it was actually very directly financially rewarding to a village to have the best taiko players. So Michelle, when did taiko come to New Zealand? Given it is, its roots are very ancient, its current performance is maybe 50 years old, when did we in New Zealand get hooked on taiko drumming? Uh, I think the first group was actually in Wellington, and I'm not sure, I think they're about 20 years old or something like that. And then the next one would have been the Palmerston North Group, which Saho actually led for a while. Do you know how old they are, Saho? Um, 17 years. And then us in Hamilton, we've been going for eight years now. And there's a lot of really quite new um, groups like Tamashi and the first South Island group, Raijin, started in Nelson just last year. So we're spreading out now. So tell me, I mean, you're with different groups now. Can you each perhaps describe for me what your style is? Because if I saw you all together, performing together, as you will be at the festival, would you be very distinctly different groups, even though you're all doing taiko drumming? I think the answer is yes, but it's, it's interesting that International Pacific College, IPC in Palmerston North, was one of the, obviously, the original groups of taiko in New Zealand and in many ways is the mother group of, of many New Zealand groups today. So this, the styles as people have graduated the university and moved throughout New Zealand formed new taiko groups. There's a lot of direct inspiration there that's affected their styles, but at the same time, they've brought their own uh, taste to it and those groups have branched out a lot. So, for example, Tamashi is, is definitely inspired by IPC, but we also have a lot of our own new material and we've begun developing our own movements, our own character, our own uh, dress. Everything is different involving new instruments and it's quite interesting to see how, how it starts to branch away. So yes, at the Tycho Fest in Hamilton I imagine you'll see some commonalities among them in terms of certain movements and rhythms, but at the same time it will you know, definitely be distinctive groups. Michelle, your group is called Y Tycho. We, we heard them just before on the program. Do you have, a, I'm guessing, a Maori element to it? It was kind of, uh, yeah, based on Waikato because we're based at the Waikato University and also a lot of our uh, songs and inspiration have come from our initial coaches that we had in Kyoto and that a lot of them are based around water and rivers and oceans and things and so I just thought it was quite a nice tie-in to have that kind of element. So our Japanese name actually has the symbol for water um, but we read it as the Māori word why. Is New Zealand creating something a little bit different, do you think? Mm. Well, one thing to comment on is that Japan actually has thousands of different styles. Every town, village, island, peninsula really has developed its own unique collection. So New Zealand's really quite a small family by comparison. 
It's, it's interesting you've been involved in it so long here in New Zealand. Um, so when, when you started, there, there weren't many taiko drummers. Um, do you feel that it's really taken off now? Actually, uh, I started playing taiko in New Zealand. I had no taiko experience in Japan. And uh, the reason I started playing taiko in New Zealand, one for um, cultural exchange, and another reason is uh, I started to think about uh, my identity as Japanese and that keep me playing taiko in New Zealand for ten year, over 10 years. Tell, tell me about the physicality of this drumming because it, you know, you're not sort of sitting comfortably with a drum kit in front of you. It's extremely physically hard work. I mean, is it, is it like a workout, Michelle? It really is. Um, and the more strength and power you can build up in your arms especially, but also in your, just in how you hold yourself, really affects your playing. And so a lot of the really hardcore groups in Japan actually run marathons and do quite endurance sports like that to keep their fitness levels and keep pushing them um, to be able to be better drummers as well. We don't actually run marathons. I was, I was going to ask if no one's volunteering to say, yeah, I run marathons. Uh, Michael, I guess there's an, there's an advantage. Is there being a guy, longer reach, more inherent body strength? Um, strength does play a factor in the style that I use personally, but uh, I'd have to say that a lot of the girls on our team have a much more elegant movement to their playing style. Saho, for example, is absolutely amazing. and, and just the, the strength doesn't come just from muscular power. It's as much from technique and experience as anything else. Speed and mm -hmm. agility are also part of the equation. Yes. You've got to be fast, yes. you've got to be fleet and flexible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> and have extremely high endurance. <laughs> yeah, really, definitely. Extremely. Can we look at the instruments? I mean, at the very start, Saho was telling me that they, these tended to be big drums. I, I assume that they're still big drums, Michelle, are they? Yeah, uh, the standard taiko group would have a range of big drums, which are approximately the size of a wine barrel. Yeah, that's big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and in fact, our first drums were actually wine barrels. And you'd have a smaller set of drums, which are more like a snare, and they keep the timing, they're higher pitched. But a lot of groups have other sizes. Tamashi has a huge, big ordaiko, is the ginormous drum bigger than a person yeah. and we've also got some okedaiko which are light and you carry them and they're more like a festival parade type style which we're getting into and there's also other percussion instruments that can go along with it some cymbals and gongs and melody instruments like uh, the bamboo flutes so it really can become quite a ensemble when you put it all together but at its rawest most basic uh, form you can get away with a big drum and a little drum and play beautiful music. Michael, do you have a drum size preference? I play the old daiko <laughs> primarily. I quite enjoy it, but it is exhausting. The the head of it's about uh, 1.2 meters in diameter, so it's it's a good size drum. And just the, the playing position, yeah, you you get tired quite quite quickly. So yeah. what about for you? What's your favorite drum uh, of the taiko drums? I quite like a medium-sized drum because I'm small, <laughs> so no, I'm not good at playing big or daiko. It's too big for me. Coordination must be important because you are stretching and reaching and, and movement. Is that all part of the rehearsal so you don't crash into each other? Very much. Uh, you know, Part of the rehearsing, as you mentioned before, it is very much like a martial arts. We have just a very high level of repetition trying to work things out. But at the same time, we're trying to work out cues. Oftentimes we'll do things like switching drums in the middle of a song. And there can be collisions and there can be flying bocce sticks, <laughs> knockout audience members. We worry about things like this. So it's, it's, it's very much music is an extreme sport to us. We really get into it and uh, just try to make it turn out the best we possibly can. Well, tell me about the festival, Michelle, that's coming up. You're making history in Hamilton. Yes, we are. We're inviting all the New Zealand taiko groups to come to Hamilton, and we've invited two professional drummers over from Japan, and we're going to put on some concerts, and we'll do workshops all together. So it's about um, just having the opportunity to see real professional taiko in New Zealand, which we don't get a lot of here, 
but also to really get a network happening among the New Zealand tackle groups because they are growing and it's it'll be good to all get together and just share our love of the instrument and share our strategies for starting groups and things like that as well. So how many are you expecting there? I mean, do you know how many taiko drummers there are in the country at the moment? I don't know exactly how many, but there's about seven groups, and we're expecting that there'll be approximately 50 drummers um, for the Saturday night concert, so it'll be a pretty good number. So there is composition for taiko? Is, is that one of the things that's involved, that a group will actually create its own music, or is there a traditional repertoire, if that's the right word, of, of taiko music or beats or, or drums? How does this work? <laughs> so I so was looking at me actually because I was I was uh, discussing this quite a bit before. There are a lot of traditional songs, and they have an amazing history to them, which is which I'll pass back over to Saho in a second. But groups do like to compose their own material these days, especially since the 1950s. And part of that's uh, a need to branch out and and be somewhat unique. But it's also as Taiko migrates out of Japan, which is happening very rapidly, that you just end up with a natural Western influence to it and you end up with more jazz influence. And sometimes you'll even hear bits of hip-hop in some taiko groups or, or tap dancing. It's, it's really interesting to see what, what groups do with it. 